Well, hello and welcome to Spectrum. I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. We always counted a privilege to be gathered with you. We are going to start off, we have two interviews today, and Ruth, we're going to start off with Dr. Jonathan Hansen, who has a television program with us on Friday evenings called Warnings. Yes, and then we will continue with our friend, Pastor Richard Mansfield. He's going to give us an update on the wonderful things happening here at New Beginnings Church, who's our neighbor. You're not going to want to miss a minute of both of these interviews. Wonderful men have wonderful things to share. We'll be right back. Pleased to have with us today Dr. Jonathan Hansen from World Ministries International. Many of you are probably familiar with Dr. Hansen because he has a program that has been on Alpha Omega Broadcasting for many years entitled Warnings. Welcome, Dr. Hansen. Glad to have you with us. Well, thank you, sir. We're going to talk about some interesting things today. I encourage you to stay with us. Uh, it's been a while since you've been with us, but tell us just a little bit about your own background about World Ministries International and then Eagle Saving Nations. That's something newer we're going to talk about today. Okay, yeah. Uh, World Ministries International is apostolic prophetic. I move apostolically as an apostle, prophetically as a prophet. I give a word to a nation. It comes to pass. The government invites me. And uh, you, have, you have seen, we've played orientations here where I meet with nation after nation after nation. See, God is real. What He spoke in the past, He speaks today to leaders. You just have to have, have the courage to speak what God tells you. Eagle saving nations. America is in desperate trouble. Uh, the nation, frankly, is falling. They're trying to have a, a re top of the republic move us into sheer communism, the new world order. And uh, no president is going to save the nation. I believe Donald Trump, frankly, will be the next president. He's like a Jeroboam II. The nation was in crisis. He delayed the toppling. Uh, Donald Trump will delay the toppling of the nation, but he will not stop the science of judgment. I've given him two words uh, that, hey, Mr. President, you will delay the toppling of the republic, but unless you, like Abraham Lincoln, come against sins of abomination, alternate lifestyles, homosexuality, this nation is going to be judged and millions are going to die. We're going to look at an orientation that is something that you give, and uh, well, let's share that in a, in a video form, and then we'll come back. Okay. If we have good leadership, if we have righteous leadership, the people prosper. Nations. And ladies and gentlemen, you need to be aware of that. Eagles saving nations. Soon we're going to go and release this. Eagles saving nations. Unless you and I save our nation, we're going under. Again, I work with senators, attorneys, judges, members of Congress. Hallelujah, you have all authority. Church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, church arise, in Jesus' name, church arise, hallelujah.
Well, that gives you an idea of what an orientation is. T tell us a little bit. I mean, you fill in the blanks. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a quick video. Fill well, in what, some blanks. What you saw is nation after nation all over the world, every continent, were trying to get the church back into the stadiums where the power of God, Pentecost comes down. We're not going to save a nation without the power of God. Jesus said, don't even try to represent me until you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't even try to go into ministry. And yet half of the church denies the need for the Holy Ghost. They deny it. They deny sin. They tolerate homosexuality. They bring them in, ordain them. We're talking about mainline churches under the Federal Council of Churches. It's a Marxist covering. And the other half, so many of them are in right relationship with God. They go to public schools, universities. They're taught, taught alternate lifestyles, woke, everything else, anti-Christ, anti-America. And uh, they're and not filled with the baptism. And we're seeing, you know, it really being played out in the news uh, right now as you're seeing campuses across uh, America that are really exploding in, in violence and encampments and in all sorts of things. You know, what used to be something that would be a kind of uh, held down or wasn't really as prominent. Now you're seeing it on the on the front pages and, and, and the headlines. Totally, totally. Well, you went to one of the countries uh, into South America recently, down into Bogota. Talk to us about your trip to Bogota, because I understand you just returned from there. Yeah, I held uh, four days of conferences, all-day conferences for 150 churches, uh, pastors, apostles. Five years ago, before... Uh, I went to Bogota this third time, five years ago, mm -hmm. I prophesied. They invited me to speak to 23,000 apostles. And uh, I was there two weeks at that time, uh, spoke daily. And one of the things I shared, if the church doesn't rise up and have another great awakening, you're going to lose your religious freedom. The economy is going to crash. Crime is going to explode. And you're going to have a communist government. I got off the plane. And that's exactly what they said. What you prophesied has come to pass. We have a communist government. They're taking away our freedoms. Crime is out of control. In fact, the person that picked me up in his BMW was mugged in the car 20 days earlier. Mm -hmm. And he said, again, uh, they're toppling uh, the, the open borders are trying to remove the sovereignty of every nation. It isn't, but you know, it, we're, it's not like that is just happening over there anymore. No. It's happening over here. You know, we, we've seen an influx of illegal, uh, un undocumented immigrants coming in, people that are just rushing the border. I mean, they're really not immigrants. They're really people that are coming in illegally. And as they're rushing into the country, now we're in, in the millions. It's not like it's tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands. We're into the millions. We're seeing it in our cities. We're seeing it all around. So the things that are happening in other countries are happening in the United States. Well, they are. And that's the whole purpose of Eagle Saving Nations. Every nation I go to, and you saw me in the Orient, you saw me in Africa, you saw me in Europe, you saw me in every continent. And you saw me with masses. We're trying to get the Christians back into the stadiums that Pentecost comes down. Jesus said, don't even try to represent me until you're filled with my power and authority. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. We need, in Bogota, I spoke on the government of God and the need for the Holy Ghost to save Bogota, to save Colombia. Are you doing mostly large uh, group events or are you speaking mostly to leaders or a little bit of both? I'm, I'm speaking frankly to both. And uh, if I'm available, I'll come to your church. So uh, understand that we are trying desperately to have a great awakening. We have to have a great awakening or America is going to fall. As you know it, they're trying to topple the republic. And you know my background, Brent. I mean, I have pastored five churches in my career. I've led World Ministries International now since uh, 1995. But prior and I have three doctorates in ministry, theology, divinity. But prior to that, I was in law enforcement. Uh, I was in the also military, uh, special weapons and tactics. I was in SWAT, uh, felony crime, the president of the Fellowship of Christian Peace Officers over the FBI, CIA, U.S. Marshals, Secret Service, local county police. I understand exactly what they're doing, and I'm working with law enforcement. I'm working with senators and congressmen. Let me tell you, we are in serious trouble. The church had better wake up. All right, now if you'd like to, to see more about Dr. Hansen and have an ongoing update, you can of course watch his program here on Alpha Omega Broadcasting, KZQ, 
on Friday nights. And uh, the program name is Warnings, and it is uh, one that will keep you updated on events of things that Dr. Hansen is dealing with both in the United States and internationally. And we certainly appreciate you stopping by today. Dr. Hansen, thank you for providing an update. Well, thank you, Pastor. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. we want to talk for just a few minutes about how wonderful it is to be connected with you, our viewers, and to hear from many of you, whether it is by phone or by uh, maybe you drop us a, a letter in the mail with your donation, a prayer request. We always love hearing from you. Understand that Alpha Omega Broadcasting is viewer supported. And when you uh, make your donation of any size, it really helps us in the area of continuing the programming, both inspirational and family entertainment programming that really can encourage us and keep us on the right track. We have so many wonderful ministries. Ruth, we have about 55 ministries, both local and national, that are making a difference here on Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Isn't wonderful. that great? That's wonderful. And we'd like to invite you to our website to connect with us. You can do that by going to kazq32.org to find all the programming we've been talking about. And also, if you'd like to become a partner um, with Alpha Omega Broadcasting, you can do that online as well. If you'd like to call into the station to speak to someone, feel free to do that at 505-884-8355, extension 121. Or if you have your correspondence ready to go in the mail, send it to our offices at Mon 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. We've talked about programming. There's a family safe haven partner level, which is which goes towards programming. Mm -hmm. And that is with your gift, your donation of $32 a month. We'll be sure to allocate that to the right place. Your donation of any other size, you'll become a president partner mm -hmm. member of, like I said, any other size, specifically 50, 75, 100, or above that. You know, we do want to mention that we have some great family entertainment programming, mm -hmm. not only on the overnights here at KAZQ and at different times during the day, but on our sister station, mm -hmm. KTVS on 36.1. We have uh, ma the majority of the programming there is family entertainment. So hope that that will bless you, encourage you, and provide something for your family. Thank you for your support. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. privileged to have with us a wonderful friend of Alpha Omega Broadcasting, Pastor Richard Mansfield from New Beginnings Church. Pastor Richard, thank you for coming by and sharing with us today. We're looking forward to getting, Britain, getting updated. It's always a joy to be here. Thank you for the invitation and God bless you, every one of you. Amen. Well, today we want to start off by just talking about your church. I mean, we are privileged. Uh, pastor Richard and I are are truly neighboring pastors. Yeah. We pastor all, almost across the street from yeah. each other, and just have such a wonderful fellowship between uh, between ourselves. Tell us a little bit about what's happening at New Beginnings Church. I know that you are in a newer facility. I know it's not brand new, but it, it's I guess it still qualifies to be a new. Yeah, you know we're um, we're three years into it, and uh, it's still uh, overwhelming you know you you go from this smaller facility to this larger one and you walk in and you just go God is good God is faithful and he, we are so undeserving but yet here he is but we just have seen such an explosion take place so many new people so many salvations you know last year Amen. we baptized 128 people and you know, we're, we're on track of doing the same thing this year. It's just been salvations almost every week. It's mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. exciting. Last Sunday, when I made an altar call, um, I, I just felt this, man, that, like something's going to happen. And this one guy walks up. And next thing I go, I know there's more people that God is calling. Yes. And all of a sudden, Brendan, it was like if they, they were in a race. I mean, there were 14 people that just ran up to the altar, and it was like this electric moment of the Spirit of God moving. And do you sense, and I do, but I, I want to get your take on this. Do you sense that there's a there's kind of a groundswell of, of a move of God that's happening 
in a lot of places. I'm, I'm hearing reports of just amazing things like what you just said happening all around. You know what? I think I think it's yes to answer that, but I think one it's really connected to prayer. Okay, when when you don't have prayer in a ministry, you you have ministry without the full power of God, the really connectivity of God, where He brings His people together, He knits hearts together, He brings purpose together, and and we're seeing that we have several prayer teams that pray throughout the week. That's and it's really wonderful to see what's taking place, and then miracles taking place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, crazy. There was a young man in our church, twenty-year-old kid that was going through a major bout of depression, and just, just any anyway, he put a gun in his mouth and he shot himself. Mm -hmm. The bullet came out through here, and he's alive. He's coherent. They did surgery, he didn't die, it didn't kill him, and, and I- That's the grace of God. I'm telling you, and I to told him, first of all, I said, you're a miracle. God has given you another chance in life. Praise God. And he said, I know that, Pastor. He goes, I, I can't even believe I did that, and I can't believe I got there, but I am really, really, really now so focused on the Lord, and, and it's just amazing what's taking place through that. But Brenton, to see a miracle like that was just, when he finally came to church after two months, a month in the hospital and in rehab hospital, I mean, oh, sure. just learning There's how to walk. And there, there? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a consequence. But he came in in a wheelchair and and everyone was like, are, are we really seeing what we're seeing, you know, yeah. because of the miracle of God? You know, God's not willing that any should perish. And, I, and that, that just keeps ringing in my mind that, that all would come to repentance. And, and it's so easy to, humanly speaking, to say, man, could, could God ever yeah. reach that one? But, you know, God is willing to reach any and every person and continues to, to, to beckon them yes. to come. Yes. Well, tell us about some of the ministries, because yeah. you have some great yeah. ministries that are really connected to to the city and to the community. So tell yeah, us about yeah, some. You know what? Um, one, we have a, a food pantry ministry that right. really ministers to the community. And we see the, because inflation has gone so high. It has. And just society is so out of control. Our food pantry is just, the line is a mile long. Every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 1, we have a food pantry. But once a month, the second Friday of every month, we give out, 15,000 pounds of food. Now, is that like a semi truck? So it's a semi truck. I've comes, seen those. Okay. It unloads right on our front porch, <laughs> our sidewalk. And we have about 50 volunteers that come and they build boxes with poultry and some kind of eggs and. and now, do milk people and, buy these or are they free? Or how everything's does that work? free. You just show up, you sign up. And where does this food come from? I mean, that's an amazing thing. I guess some yeah, load of food. You know what? We we have a connection with World Vision. Okay. And World Vision has been very generous to us, and we're able to give that food away. How many families do you think that you're able to help? Because when you think of the of the real pressure, I mean, the pressure. I've been talking to people in the grocery store business, and and there's a lot of pressure on people. People are struggling. Oh yeah. Uh, with with food, which is not something we thought would ever happen in the United States, but here it is. Um, how many families do you think you help? About 225. That's great. Yeah, yeah. and and we send 2,000 pounds to Clagato, Arizona. We have a mission on the Navajo uh, Nation in, in Clagato, and we send 2,000 pounds out there. And uh, 2,000 pounds of food. Think of that. That's a lot of food. Yeah, that's a lot of food. fifteen thousand pounds is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, a lot of food. Now there's other really ministries dangerous. because yeah. I've been talking to fr other friends who are talking about you know uh, a combination of ministries to, to different groups that are really most of them housed out of your church. Yeah, you know what? We uh, formed an organization called the Power of Five. I've yep, heard about and that. And the Power of Five is is I really believe in networking. I believe in collaborating one with others because Good. I really believe no one could do one job. All of us could do it, oh, just one. It takes every one of us. Every Amen. church come together, every pastor come together. And anyway, we have uh, we have Frontline Resurrection Ministry, which is a ministry for women coming out of prison, coming out of sex trafficking, 
coming Very out of, of just being homeless, learning how to live in society again. So we house them, we, we teach them how to be, uh, really just uh, learn how to be a woman again, learn how to, uh, to dress and look for a job and how to interview and on and on. Then we have under his construction, that's a drug and alcohol rehabilitation home for men and women. Yes. And God is doing amazing things there. Then we have God's Warehouse, and that's our homeless ministry on Central Boulevard. Yes. We're at Central in Tennessee. We feed 350 to 500 people every day, that seven days a week. That's just incredible. And it's not just homeless people. There's people coming from the community, and that's in the international zone. So they're coming there saying, I need food. We, we, we're, we're, we don't have food, we, like you're just saying. We're struggling. How do we do this? And so they're coming there, and we give out clothing and what have you. And then there's Crossroads Counseling Center to help people that are really in need. And now that you've come off of drugs, out of, out of homelessness, out of prison, how do I function now in this world that I have been isolated from right and how do i reintegrate and then our church where they could be welcomed and you could come to church here we're not going to say i'm sorry you're not welcomed here sure our church really shows the demographic of our city we have judges and lawyers and we have doctors and we have people that are in poverty and there's even some homeless that might walk in there's people that of all races uh, we really have uh, several, we really show the demographics of, of Albuquerque, and that's really awesome. What is the best way, Pastor, for people to connect with New Beginnings and the ministries you are engaged with? Is the best way to just come by, the best way to stop by and look on the Internet? You, you know, I know you have a television program here. You, I'm sure you do things on, on social media. What's, what's your best connecting point? You know what, folks? the best connecting point, if you need the food, come to our facility, and that's at 4770 Montgomery a lot of people know where Kane's restaurant is. Yeah, yeah. we're right behind. They were Kane's. in line trying to get some. Chicken. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the lines were ridiculous. But we're right behind Kane's, and God is doing an amazing work. They could call us at 505-883-9079, or go to the website. That's NBC, which stands for New Beginnings Church, ABQ for Albuquerque. So NBCABQ.com. And man, we have women's ministry that are exploding. There's over a hundred women that come together every month, about 70 men for our men's breakfast and youth and children. And I could go on and on, but it's great. Great, wonderful church right here in the city of Albuquerque. And I would encourage you to, to check out New Beginnings Church. They're a, a neighbor of mine, and I know that they're doing great things for the kingdom of God. Pastor, thank you for the update. Thank you so much. sharing with you from the book of Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 3 on God working all things for our good. Yes. And Saul approved of their killing him. On that day a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. You know, you read those verses, Ruth, and it doesn't sound very encouraging at all. It st yeah. ta starts by talking about Paul approving mm -hmm. of the, the murder of Stephen. And the Greek word means to really approve, to be pleased with. Okay, yes. and he's excited about that. the The second verse talks about the fact that they were mourning Stephen as they are, are burying him, and the and the fact that Saul is destroying the church. The third verse says he's literally going house to house and dragging people out, men and women. And you say, where is anything good in that? And that just reminds yeah. me that a lot of times in life, we look at our problems or our situation and we say, how could anything good come from this? That's good. Or, or in times like now, and you're like, where is God in all of this? Does, right. does he know what's going on? And it, it's, has, is it too far gone? Right. I can't believe this is happening. And yet those verses actually tell us how God is going to work it out for good. Mm -hmm. Because it says in the first verse, 
and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. It really functioned as what we might say, uh, recently we talked about super spreaders. You remember that during all of the pandemic? Oh, there could be a super spreader. It could, it could spread things all over the place. God used the persecution to spread the gospel into various communities outside of just Jerusalem and Judea. And he used it to cause many other people to come to the knowledge of the good news of Jesus Christ. What Satan intends for evil, God is able to work out for good. That's right. That's what I was going to say. So you took the words out of my oh, mouth. Sorry. But God is able to do good things out of something bad. He takes beauty from ashes, something that you think is totally destroyed, not recoverable from. God can change it for, for his glory. Amen. I would encourage you today, if you're going through maybe a, a, a difficult season, to just look to the Lord and say, Lord, what do I need to, to know about this? What do I need to learn from this? I'm trusting you. And if you will listen, you will see God open your eyes to the good that he has planned. Thanks for being with us on Spectrum. Have a blessed day.